Welcome everybody to our weekly Firefly community call. Um, just a couple of quick announcements before we jump in. Um, last week, uh, one of the questions afterward was about a, a contributor guide or a process for becoming a maintainer. And just wanted to let folks know that uh, that is in progress. There is a, a draft PR open for the Firefly repo that has a proposed process for uh, becoming a maintainer. Uh, we'd like to get that merged soon and plan on doing so. Just want to give the existing maintainers a chance to look at it and comment on it though. Uh, one of them is out on vacation. So uh, that will likely be merged on Monday. And I, I see Dano just joined, he brought that up last week. So Dano, that was the, uh, the process for becoming a maintainer. The documentation on that is going to be merged here very soon. Cool. I saw that um, Arun mentioned it too on another one of your calls, or that or that was the Hyperledger meetup. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then there's been questions about you know how do I how do I get started? How do I become a contributor? Uh, there's there's documentation on that in the same PR with some helpful links on uh, you know where to find good first issues and that sort of thing. So uh, working on on building out the uh, community documentation there. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to note is, uh, so we had a, a great meetup last week, and uh, there is another one tomorrow. This the, tomorrow's is aimed at the uh, a time slot that's friendly for Hyperledger India and the uh, APAC region. And uh, John, do you want to, I see you're on, you, um, I don't know if you want to comment on that at all, but I just wanted to, to let folks know about that as well. Oh yeah, thanks, Nico. Yeah, I think that we had an excellent uh, turnout for the Hyperledger meetup. I think one of the things that I have as a takeaway is we did it as more of a studio presentation, and I just want to make sure that we work out the kinks with that integrating with the YouTube live stream. And so, if we do another presentation, which I'm open to, then we may want to just consider doing a direct Zoom presentation versus the studio model just to make sure that the video comes through clear and uh, perfect. Yeah, that's that's a good call out. I, I watched the YouTube recording afterward and was uh, also disappointed in the uh, absolutely crushing compression that Zoom placed on the video. So uh, it, yeah, we'll, uh, I, I have some thoughts on how to make that better for, for tomorrow and for next time around, so. Okay, good. So just reach out feedback. if you wanna, you know, redo that in a, you know, future time and do it as a direct Zoom presentation because those always seem to turn out perfectly. Okay, thanks. All righty, uh, those are the only announcements that I had. Um, so today's topic is Firefly plugin architecture and configuration. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. So uh, especially as folks are curious about uh, you know, how do I, how do I get involved in, um, in contributing to Firefly and uh, where, you know, what does this look like to commit code to it? Uh, I, I think this will be a, a especially important topic. Um, first of all, can, can folks see my screen? I think I am sharing it. I've got multiple monitors here though. It's the uh, white, uh, black letters on white and it says plug okay. in architecture. Excellent. Uh, I, I hope you like my Google Slides theme. I spent a long time working on it. Um, it's it, it's uh, very readable and high contrast. <laughs> uh, sarcasm there. I need I need to get my designer friends to make me a cool uh, Firefly Google Slides template because we don't have one yet. But that that would be nice. So um, yeah, let's jump right in. So you've probably seen this slide if you've been around for Firefly meetups or uh, we've probably shown it in other community calls as well. So uh, we're gonna kind of dive into this a little bit more today and talk about um, you know, how, how do all of these things actually work in the code? We'll actually go look at some of the code in just a little bit as well. Um, so we're gonna kind of break this down. So. A, a Firefly node is, um, but when we talk about a Firefly node, we really mean a, um, a machine or even like a group of machines, possibly, you could have some of these things running on multiple machines even, that uh, is sort of one unit in the Firefly network that belongs to a member. A member can have multiple nodes if they want, 
uh, for redundancy. Um, sorry, they can they, they have a node, they can have multiple cores uh, if they want for redundancy. And then uh, for each of the infrastructure pieces, uh, sort of the, the redundancy model there is left up to the particular uh, redundancy model of that piece of infrastructure. So for instance, if you're using Postgres, it might look one way for you know how you uh, scale Postgres, how you make it redundant and solve for HA and those sorts of things. So um, I, I think this you know this this diagram is is sort of helpful. Um, I've put together another one though to specifically look at okay what is like if I'm thinking about this from the code and I, I want to visualize it that way, um, what does that look like? And so I, I've kind of built a stack here that I want to talk through. So. At the bottom of the stack, you have the Firefly core. This is the uh, like the so the Firefly core is written in GoLang. Uh, so this is like the main Go process that starts up, reads some config, and then does a whole bunch of other things. Um, on top of the core, you have a series of interfaces, and this is sort of the the base layer of like. These are all of the types of behaviors that, Fi that Firefly can do and that you can do with Firefly. So you can persist things to a data store. Um, you can obviously do things with blockchains. Uh, there is network identity. You can exchange data with other members of the network. You could store pu files publicly. And then there is uh, event transport for notifying members of the network of events. So these are. These are implemented as uh, as interfaces, and um, then there's kind of the, the next layer above that is like specific implementations of those interfaces. So, uh, if if you want to write a plugin for Firefly, uh, you can swap out you know anything at this layer by implementing the uh, you know the methods that are expected to be on something that implements these interfaces. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, we'll kind of keep building this up. So for the persistence layer, there there's no no SQL in there right now. But we've we've thought about okay, at some point somebody is probably going to want a NoSQL database. Um, so that would kind of slot in probably right next to this one. Right now there is a SQL abstraction layer though that uh, lets you use different types of SQL databases and uh, you know abstracts the the specifics of each one uh, and all. As we as we go up, I'll show the the specific ones that are uh, currently there and implemented. It's worth noting that this diagram is representative of like the things that are there and the things that are in active development right now. So there are other things like tokens. Uh, I have not uh, tokens are actually being worked on. Um, I have not put them in this diagram because I don't know exactly where those building blocks will fit yet. But I imagine there would be probably another whole vertical column over here that uh, implements tokens. Um, I need to I need to chat with Andrew someday about uh, how that fits with the, the blockchain interface though and what the overlap is there. So so if you want to build a, uh, a plugin, you um, you're basically going to write a, a thin layer of go code that implements you know one of these specific interfaces down here that knows how to talk to the particular uh, microservice API database or whatever it is that you want Firefly to work with. So hopefully that makes sense. If we go up another layer. Now we're going to jump out of probably in most cases, the, uh, so all, all of these things are in the, the Firefly core go process. So that's that's kind of what we talk about uh, when we mean the Firefly core. So that's that's usually all going to be in a single process. If we go up a layer, we're going to jump out of that process most of the time now to a connector layer. Now the connector layers are optional, but for the blockchain nodes, uh, each each blockchain uh, definitely uses one right now. So we have ETH Connect, Fab Connect, and we're working on Core to Connect. Fab Connect is, is in active development as well. So uh, basically each of these things is going to talk to uh, the, the specific service that it's been designed to adapt to this interface. So uh, we'll, we'll just go up one more layer here so you can see the full picture. So then finally at the top, you have the, like the specific implementation or um, sort of, you could, we, we often describe Firefly as a, 
micro um, sorry, that should say microservices, not microprocessors. <laughs> um, it's sort of a, a microservice architecture where uh, you have a, a lot of different processes that have some sort of well-defined API that's exposed uh, and they can communicate with other microservices in the system. So in this case, our SQL abstraction layer can talk to either Postgres SQL or SQL Lite. Um, there's some, some thin client code here that talks to ETH Connect, which then is designed to work with Ethereum nodes. Uh, same with, with Fab Connect. For identity, uh, right now we have one identity implementation and it's it, it right now is somewhat coupled to uh, Ethereum. It uses on-chain identity. Uh, that obviously needs to change as we move to Fabric and Corda. Uh, to a, a more general purpose identity system. But that the, the on-chain identity is what's there in the code right now. Um, right now, the uh, so Firefly Data Exchange HTTPS is the name of the repo that this uh, is the current implementation of data exchange within Firefly. But again, all of these things could be swapped out. So if you had uh, another application that could uh, exchange data privately and securely, uh, you could write a, a plugin, you could write some, some Go code to put, you know, slot in right next to here that implements the data exchange interface and talks to a different system right here instead of the uh, Firefly data exchange HTTPS. Uh, IPFS is used for public storage and uh, that's, that's naturally a, a really good fit there, but same, same case here. If you wanted something other than IPFS, you could build something that would just slot in right there. Um, also worth, commenting on the, the event transport. The event transport interface is, you could swap it out for something different uh, if you wanted to as well. So, um, you know, in, in an HTTP world, WebSockets and webhooks or HTTP requests, callbacks, makes sense as a way to communicate with other applications. So, so this is how, you know, if you're building a Firefly app, um, this is how your app would get notified from Firefly when something happens. Somebody sent you a message, you sent a message that got confirmed, um, these sorts of things. So right now uh, we've, we've talked about in the past how you can create subscriptions to uh, receive events from Firefly. This is the, the implementation of how those things are sent to your application. So if you wanted something other than WebSockets, you could build some other thing and uh, you could you know, put in some Go code here that sends uh, events on some other transport other than WebSockets if you wanted to. And that that's totally something that you could do. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's kind of it in terms of the slides that I had to share. Uh, at this point, the, the, the next thing I'd like to do is go hop into the code base and actually show, you know, how do we configure these things? Um, that's actually my next slide. <laughs> um, you know, how do we configure them and you know, where, where do these you know, if, if I want to contribute to this, if I want to write a plugin, um, where is all this at in the code base? So that, that's what we're going to look at next. Before we jump into that, I just wanted to pause. Um, hopefully this, this diagram makes sense. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to pause to see if people have questions on this before we go actually look at code, because if you're lost now, you're probably going to be lost more later. So I'll, I'll pause here for questions. Any comment uh, from the connector layer, right? So is that, I mean, uh, are all of these already complete? Are they working connectors or uh, it's yet to be built? Great question. So, so ETH Connect is here, it's done. If you, uh, if you run the CLI to create an environment, this is, this is the vertical slice that you get for the blockchain layer. Uh, Jim Zhang is working a lot on Fab Connect right now. It is in progress and uh, it, I, I think it's it, it's it's partially working, but it's not totally there yet. Um, Corda Connect is earlier in progress. So so these these two slices right here are being worked on right now. Those are okay. those are great places. Uh, if if you have experience with Fabric or Corda, and uh, you, you want to jump in and contribute to the code, that um, kind of these these four blocks right here would be a fantastic place if if folks want to jump in and get involved. And that would be Go, right? Um, or all this Go, code is in Go? Uh, I believe, I, I'm not sure if Amit is on. I believe Corda Connect is Java. Yeah. Fab Connect is being written in Go, though. Yes. 
That's correct. Uh, both Ethereum and Fabric connectors are written in Go because the underlying um, libraries are mostly available in Go. Uh, Corda is all Java, so our connectors for Corda implementation is Java based. Oh, thanks, Nico. Yeah, we can. Yeah, do. yeah, great question. Thanks. Uh, looks like Rich has his hand up. Yeah, uh, if you're just transmitting uh, JSON objects and you're using the HTTPS connector, uh, do you use IPFS or is that only when you transmit blobs of information? Ooh, good question. So, I, so um, to, to be a little more specific, so you are doing a, what, which API call are you making when well, we're using the webhooks? So if, if we're using webhooks with HTTPS, and we're transmitting a JSON object or a string, does it go through IPFS uh, or does it just go straight through the connector on the right? So if the if if it was a broadcast or if it was a public message, it would use the, the payload would be stored on IPFS. The the so the data would get hashed, the hash would be stored on the blockchain, the payload would be stored in IPFS. Uh, if it was a private message, then it will use the data exchange. If you are um, definitely presenting a blob, I be believe if, yeah, if it's, even if it's just JSON, it will still uh, traverse the data exchange instead of IPFS. Okay, thank you. Yep. Good question. Uh, any other questions before we go look at some code and config and stuff? Okay, uh, I'm gonna just switch my desktop over here. Hopefully you should be able to see VS Code now. Yeah, we can see it, Nico. Okay, cool. So uh, this is an example of a Firefly con config file. Um, so I wanna start actually showing you the config. Um, some of you have probably seen one already, but uh, I just wanted to, it's very relevant to this concept of plugins because there's obviously for each of these things, they're going to need configuration and each one of them is going to be configured probably very differently than the other ones. So uh, I just wanted to talk through a little bit of how that happens. So um, there's there's some stuff that's built into the, the Firefly core that you can configure here, like obviously the logging level, um, the, the HTTP, uh, the API, the REST interface is sort of, uh, that's built into that base layer, that, that kind of that gray box at the bottom, Firefly core. Um, there's, there's also an admin interface that you can configure. Uh, and this is used for, um, you can actually, Firefly has a concept of like dynamic configuration where uh, if you're standing a node up, it, um, you can, this is its, its default, um, so this is a, like a default config that the CLI has generated. So it stands a Firefly node up in this pre init state. So it's basically just sitting there going, okay, I, I don't have all the config I need yet. So I'm waiting for some config. Um, and it, there's actually an API endpoint on this admin interface that you can post additional configuration to. I'm not gonna get into all the mechanics of how you do that. Um, if you're curious, the, the CLI code base does that. Uh, you can have a look at, at what it's doing there, but uh, you, through this interface, you, you can actually post configuration to it. And uh, there's another endpoint you can call to like get it to reload the config and reload all the plugins. Um, there's some other stuff in here, like where it will serve a front end from. If you want it to serve a front end, uh, you, you could take this whole key out and it will disable that. Um, and then like the name of the node and its organization. So th those are all kind of like core things. And then the rest of this is our, our plugins. So um, you'll notice how each of these things sort of corresponds to at, at this root layer, uh, one of the, the interface layer blocks on my little uh, stack diagram. So starting with blockchain, uh, first you tell Firefly, okay, what, what type of blockchain do I want to work with? And in this case, it's going to be Ethereum. And then you define another key called the name of the type that you put there. And then, uh, so you could have an Ethereum blockchain that uses something other than ETH Connect if you wanted to. If you wrote a, um, if we go, actually, you know what, I'll just, here I can slide back to here. If we wrote some other piece of code here that was something other than ETH Connect, 
we could put something here that's you know something other than ethconnect and maybe provides a different way to talk to uh, ethconnect I, i'm not sure what the advantage of that would be but um it's very modular so it's it's there if you need it then we get into some specific ethconnect things and I'll, i'm actually going to show you where in the code we'll find these things in a little bit so you've got a url for ethconnect this is its its http api um just a, a side note these urls may look funny because this um this particular config file like i said was generated by the cli so it's designed to work in a docker compose network which is why everything has not ip addresses and things like a dns name of ethconnect underscore zero that's a that's a docker compose thing um we have a, a an instance and a topic as well um so we've con configured database stuff here again we define uh, the type and then have a key that has the specific things that that database implementation needs and uh, so on and so forth so down here public storage we're using ipfs ipfs has actually like two different apis that it needs um and, uh, and then and there's data exchange down here so um i'm just taking a quick check on time this is probably uh good enough on the config file for now. Uh, now want to actually hop over to the code and show you like, okay, if I was going to build one of these things, um, where where in the code base would I go? So uh, just to kind of highlight how cool the uh, the plugins are, let's have a look at postgres.go. So this is under, it, uh, if you clone the Firefly repo, we're in the, this is the Firefly core code base we're looking at here. Uh, so this is going to be under internal database postgres, postgres.go. Um, it's very short. We're basically just initializing a, a Postgres driver here and defining a couple of different um, strings that might be slightly variable between different types of databases. And that's, that is about it. Um, likewise, if we look at SQLite, um, there's a SQLite.go. It's also very short, basically does the same thing. It's basically just setting up the driver if we look at config, not a lot of config here. So all of the all of the grunt work of all the database stuff is being done through a SQL common package here. And this is where we've defined all the stuff of like, okay, I have this type. How do I get this type into the database? How do I get it out? How do I query it? How do I sort it? That's all implemented in all of these files. And then like using a different type of SQL database is uh, is pretty much as easy as just you know configuring it initializing the driver and then wiring it up to uh, this, you know, sort of this common SQL layer that we have here. So uh, as an example, uh, we we started with a different, uh, we started with Postgres and a different database uh, called QL. It was, you know, it's all written in Go um, and it was kind of cool, but it had some quirks and um, we decided, you know what, we're going to, this has problems. It was, it was really nice for unit testing, but um, not really a production quality thing. So. So, you know, SQLite is a lot more commonly used. So we're going to swap out QL with SQLite. Um, one of the developers was able to do that in like, I don't know, I think it only took him a couple of, an hour or two at most. And he probably got something else done at that time as well. But it was really easy just to swap that out. Um, so, so that was pretty cool. Um, look at one more thing here before we wrap up. So if you're going to write a plugin, uh, we talked about how certain plugins are going to need specific configuration. So um, there, there is, if we look at, let's see, internal uh, config. If we look at config, this is where like all of the core configuration is defined and all of the, so these are like all the, the specific keys that you'll find in the core configuration uh, as well as all of their defaults. So if you're, if you're ever curious, um, hopefully at some point we have, Amazing documentation that will, you know, just show all of these in Markdown somewhere. Um, we're not there yet. It would be cool to even auto-generate that. But um, if you're curious about what a default setting is in Firefly, this is the place to find it in config um, in the um, in the config package. So this is this is the, the the core config. But what about for a plugin? So let's look at uh, ethconnect. We'll go into uh, internal and go into blockchain, Ethereum, um, look at ethereum.go. Sorry, this is, uh, 
yeah, we want to look at config. Okay, so so this is the uh, this is these are the config keys for ETH Connect. So basically, um, we're going to define all the known keys here, and you can see these same uh, so like instance topic. There, there's some other things that weren't set in config like batch size and batch timeout. Um, these are all the things in the config file that are going to be down here at this layer. So uh, we're defining all of the all the keys, and then we also define defaults for them as well. And then uh, here's where the defaults are actually set. Uh, all of the config is managed with the uh, the Viper library in GoLang is kind of what is orchestrating all of this config and sort of like rolling it up into uh, all the different places that config can come from. So it can come from uh, obviously your config file uh, when you run Firefly. Um, it will say you could pass in a config file with the dash F flag, uh, or you can override stuff uh, with the environment variables as well. So uh, you could prefix something with uh, everything's prefixed with uh, uppercase Firefly underscore. So I could say, um, you know, anything that could be defined in this config file, it, you're going to use uh, basically underscores to separate the different levels here. So uh, that's how config gets rolled up into here. Um, and then in the actual implementation of the the plugin, um, basically all of these known keys can be referenced, and that's how your plugin can actually read things. So uh, let's see if I can find an example. I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, it, I I won't spend time scrolling through code uh, to bore you to death. But basically, this this is where those those keys are going to be read. Um, I'm sure there's some in here somewhere. Anyway, um, that is, we're, we're at the, the bottom of the hour and that was about all I had to present on this topic. So hopefully this is a, <laughs> it's, it's a huge code base. And this was just like a, a quick flyby of like, hey, here's some stuff in this, you know, uh, tens of thousands of lines of code, code base. But um, hopefully it's a little bit of enough of a taste that if you are curious about like going to see how things are put together, um, you at least have a picture, you know, this a diagram in your head of kind of how all the building blocks stack on top of each other, and uh, just a, a quick little pointer into the code to to know where to get started.